everyone. Glad to see you all here today. I see you made time to be here. Thanks so much for being on time. After all, we have a good time planned for us. Did you catch the word time? Have you ever thought about how you use your time? Every day we get 24 hours and a lot of our time gets taken up by sleep, school and meals. However, we also have free time. At recess, you might have free time or maybe after school. How do you spend your free time? Some of you might play video games, watch TV, go outside or read. And God gave us 24 hours in a day and the older we get, the more we get to choose what to do with all of our time. And Jesus asks us to be good stewards of our time, which means we should be good managers of our time. Think of your time like money. You can spend it wisely serving God, or you can waste it on things that might not be useful. Jesus spent his time caring for others, and we can follow Jesus's example. Let's look at today's Bible story. But first, we're gonna look at our love segment. Well, boys and girls, we are at week four, our last special love segment. And before we get into the main topic, I wanna to tell you a story that comes from a novel written by C.S. Lewis. This story is from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So if you've ever seen that movie or read that book, this story is coming from that. So in the book, there is a boy called Edmund, and he has some other brothers or sisters, but he's pretty jealous of them a lot of the time. And throughout the story, the brothers and sisters end up going through a magical wardrobe into a new land where there's different magical creatures, there's a wicked witch, and there's lots of different things that go on. Now the witch finds Edmund, and she tricks him, and she says, if you betray your brothers and sisters and come with me and sneak away, then I will make you a prince of this land and your brothers and sisters will be your servants. And he does that and Edmund is tricked and he intentionally betrays his brothers and sisters. Now, in the story, there's a great lion and his name is Aslan. And Aslan, when hearing that Edmund was taken prisoner by this witch, decides that he will go and sacrifice his own life for Edmund. He goes and makes a deal with the witch that she could kill the lion for Edmund to be brought back to his family. Wow, can you imagine someone loving someone so much to give them their life? And that's exactly what Aslan did. And he did die in the place of Edmund. Well, boys and girls, the truth of that story is it's based on a real story that happened in real life. Jesus gave his life for you and for me. In the Bible, in the book of John, it says that there is no greater love than this, that someone would lay their life down for a friend. And boys and girls, Jesus gave his life for you and me. All of us have sinned, boys and girls. All of us have done things that are wrong and fallen short of God's glory and majesty. But Jesus made a way for us to be together with God by giving his life. And that is the greatest love. Now, as Stephanie mentioned earlier, Jesus did not stay dead. He rose again from the grave. And now he wants all of us to love others like he has loved us. So boys and girls, I know I say this often, but if you have never experienced the love of Jesus and what it means to be part of his family, ask your mom and dad or ask me or Miss Stephanie because we would love to share with you what it means to be loved by Jesus so much that he wants to become part of your family and introduce you into his family. All right, boys and girls, I'm gonna pray over this last week of this session and then we're gonna stand up and worship God. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your love. Thank you that you went to the cross to pay for my sin and the sins of Bayview kids and the whole world. God, I pray if there is anyone that does not know that they are loved by you so much that they would ask that question about how they can become part of your family. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's stand up together and worship Jesus who gave his life for us.
66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Mark, chapter 10. Verses 46 through 52. Jesus spent time with people of every kind from every background. He answered trick challenges from important religious leaders and sincere questions from rich men. Sell everything you have. Give the money to those who are poor, then come follow me. Jesus didn't hesitate to welcome kids. Let the little children come to me. He was endlessly patient with his own friends when they argued about who should be first. The Son of Man did not come to be served. Instead, He came to serve others. Even as Jesus made His last journey to Jerusalem, He didn't let what was ahead distract Him from the people He met along the way. Uh, hey Jesus, this crowd we picked up in Jericho is really slowing us down. Want to pick up the pace? But Jesus didn't try to shake off the crowds that followed Him. It's hey, Jesus. Jesus. Hey, hey, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. A short way ahead, a man named Bartimaeus sat by the road on a torn and dusty mat. He stretched out his arms desperately, hoping someone would drop a few coins in his empty hand. Please help me. Bartimaeus was blind. There was no work he could do to earn money, so he depended on the kindness of strangers passing by. The crowd quickly surrounded him. He's right there! Look it's him, I see Jesus! Jesus. I, I, I swear I see him over there. Jesus? Bartimaeus had heard of Jesus. He'd heard stories of sick people who'd been healed by Jesus, and in his heart, he believed they were true. Jesus! Bartimaeus knew he couldn't let this chance slip away. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Shh, be quiet. Jesus probably doesn't have any time for you. Son of David, have mercy on me. Let it go, Jesus! Through all the noise and clamor, Jesus heard Bartimaeus plea. It would have been easy to keep walking, to push on towards Jerusalem, but instead, Jesus stopped. Call for him. What? What's happening? Cheer up! On your feet! Bless your heart, Jesus is actually calling for you! Me? He, he heard me! Bartimaeus jumped up, tossing aside his dusty coat. He staggered towards the voice he'd heard. Hands in the crowd helped him to find his way. Jesus! What do you want me to do for you? Teacher! Teacher! I want to be able to see! Jesus smiled as he looked directly into Bartimaeus' unseeing eyes. Go! Your faith has healed you. Bartimaeus blinked and blinked again. Bright colors and shapes flashed before his eyes, vivid and breathtaking. I, my eyes, uh, I can see. As a brand new world came into focus, Bartimaeus fixed his gaze on the face before him, the deep eyes and kind smile of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, <laughs> thank you. Jesus nodded, then turned again towards Jerusalem. As the crowd began to move, Bartimaeus joined in to follow the man who had stopped for a few minutes to change his life. Well, boys and girls, you heard Miss Stephanie mention time very subtly as she did earlier, and that's what we're gonna talk about for a few moments. Boys and girls, Jesus could have easily passed by Bartimaeus. He was very busy. He had a lot of important things that he was doing, but he took the time to sit with Bartimaeus and he actually healed him. 
Wow, what a radical change that Bartimaeus experienced. Now, boys and girls, we know that we can spend more time helping people. That's something that we learn at school and our parents tell us. But another thing that I want us to think about today is the life of Bartimaeus. After one encounter with Jesus, from being blind and then being able to see, how much do you think his life changed? Do you think he talked about it all the time? Do you think he did things differently because of that encounter with Jesus? Probably. I doubt he went around and said, well, that was fun, and then forgot about it the next day. Now, boys and girls, when we have encounters with Jesus, when we pray to Jesus, when we worship Jesus, we can experience those same things. And I hope for you, boys and girls, it's not just something that you do and then forget about later, but having a relationship with Jesus means being constantly changed by him. And I know in my life, it's something that I want to talk about a lot because it's so wonderful and I want to share what God is doing in my life. Years ago, I was a very different person than I would be now if I hadn't experienced Jesus. And every day he's changing me and helping me and helping me to be more like him and to love others well. So I want to encourage you for this whole month about being compassionate to others, learning to love like Jesus loves, and just recognizing that boys and girls, Jesus loves you so much that he gave his life for you. All right, go get your younger brothers or sisters for our preschool service.
hope I can find some hiking boots in the shoe trunk. Aha! These will fit. I'm going to pick blueberries and they are going to be so yummy. Mom said I can make lots of things with them. Stuff like blueberry muffins, blueberry yogurt, blueberry pancakes. So good. Yum! These blueberry treats are going to taste so good. I can't wait to eat them all. Hoo, hoo. It's Ollie! Hello, Peyton. Who? Who? Picking blueberries, are you? Oh, hi, Ollie. Blueberries are so yummy. I'm going to eat them all up. Berries are tasty. It's true. And we can be a good friend and share what we have, too. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Hello friends, I am Luis the Handyman. I'm getting ready to do something very fun today with my friends. I have special boots and a picnic basket. What do you think I'm going to do? <laughs> That's right, I'm going to go on a hike. I will wear my hiking boots to help me on the trail. And when we get to the top, we're going to have a picnic. Hmm. I hope I have enough food. <laughs> hey! reminds me of today's story. Do you want to help me build it? Great! Let's put it on the story fence. Hammers up, little builders! Ready? Uno, dos, tres! Hammer! Great job, little helpers! You can put your hammers down. Now, we just need our story tools. Yep! We have everything we need. Today's true story from the Bible begins on a beach. Jesus and his friends had been working really hard. They were tired. Everybody yawn with me like you're so sleepy. Very good. <laughs> Jesus and his friends had planned to rest, but when they got to land, they found a huge crowd of people. There were more than 5,000 people. They wanted to see Jesus and hear him teach. Do you think Jesus taught the people? Well, of course, because Jesus is a good friend to everyone. Jesus taught for a long time and everyone was getting hungry. Jesus' friends, the disciples, told Jesus to send the people away so they could eat. But Jesus said to the disciples, you feed them. The disciples didn't know how to feed everyone. There were so many people. So Jesus told the disciples to go and see how much food they could find. When the disciples came back, they had, huh, how many loaves of bread did they find? One, two, three, four, Five. Five loaves of bread. And how many fish did they find? One, two, two fish. So they had five loaves of bread and two fish. Is that enough food to feed over 5,000 people? Let's find out. <laughs> Jesus took the food and prayed. He thanked God for the food they had. Then Jesus told the disciples, to pass out the food to everyone. Hmm. Oh, how many of you got food? Oh, is anyone still hungry? That's so amazing. Jesus fed everyone with five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus made sure that everyone had food to eat. Jesus was a good friend to everyone and everyone can be friends with Jesus. Hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who can be friends with Jesus? Everyone can be friends with Jesus. 
Yes, it's true. Now, let's hear it from you. Tell me, who can be friends with Jesus? Everyone can be friends with Jesus. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Adios. So there's your story, and it's all true. Jesus shared the food with everyone, and he wants us to share with our friends, too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. Wow, Jesus used just two fish and five loaves of bread to feed so many people. Jesus is a good friend to everyone. Everyone can be friends with Jesus. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! <gasps> I know! I'm going to make something with my blueberries to share with everyone. See you next time. Bye! Come and follow me, Jesus said, Matthew 4, 19. Come and follow me, Jesus said, Matthew 4, 19. Wow! Jesus said to do everything in love, and I know we can too. I think I got the story. If you got it, let's see a big thumbs up. Awesome! Because I know that Jesus loves everyone, I can show his love to others too. Let's do everything in love this week. See you next week!